It is a big year in CGM technology and upgrades from new CGMs, longer wear time up to 15 days, integration with health trackers, new apps, and insulin finally getting automated by an implantable CGM. Welcome to the show, I'm Justin, I have type one diabetes, and on here I talk all things diabetes tech, news, and research. We've got this YouTube channel, podcasts on Mondays, and diabetic.info where I post the latest in diabetes tech and research, so you don't wanna miss out on that. There's a link to that and my newsletter in the show notes. Today's episode is sponsored by SugarPixel that gets live glucose readings from my CGM, and you'll hear more about it in a bit. All right, let's get into it. Let's start with one of the biggest players in the CGM space, and that is Dexcom. They have a new 15-day sensor coming with the Dexcom G7. Currently, it's 10 days. This one will last 50% longer. That is a long time. You probably only need two of these a month. In fact, they also have a 12-hour grace period, bringing it to 15 and a half days, which makes this the longest wearable external CGM. This new version is only cleared for people 18 years and older for now. It is the same sensor, the same hardware, but there is an updated software and algorithm. Dexcom says that with this new algorithm, it has a MARD from 8.2% to 8%. The lower the MARD, the better. Then again, I don't know how much merit to put into MARD these days considering there is no universal way of calculating MARD, so all these companies are coming out with their accuracy, but they're not universally the same. You can learn more about MARD in a podcast episode that I talked about with uh, Diabetic of UK. Does MARD matter? Gotta watch that, I'll throw that in the show notes. This new sensor releases in the second half of 2025. Worries that I have with it are, will this thing get dirty around the edges for 50% longer time? It already kind of gets dirty around the edges on its current sensor with that overpatch. Also, Dexcom's press release pointed to a study on this sensor that 26% of them won't last the full 15 days. Now, that's not Dexcom's fault, they created a great sensor, but insurance companies should keep this in mind, at least in the US, with how many sensors they're giving to patients. If 26% of them aren't gonna last the full 15 days, then it sounds like we need 26% more sensors. I've been toying with the idea of a campaign getting signatures and a petition for insurance companies to provide more sensors. If you are into that, give this video a like or comment. More big news with Indexcom is that their Stello CGM, which is meant for people who don't take insulin, now integrates with the Aura Ring. Now, this is exciting because there are so many factors that can affect glucose levels, and the Aura Ring tracks a lot of them, stress, sleep, exercise, heart rate, and so many more. Unfortunately, it's only with the Stello right now, but I do hope that they bring this integration to the G7 and other CGMs in the future. Here's what is coming with that integration. Aura Ring's new glucose feature shows blood glucose patterns over time and correlates them with lifestyle behaviors like sleep, stress, and activity. On the glucose graph, users will see their glucose curve throughout the day and markers for these different events. And then they can learn how their glucose is affected by these moments. There's also a meals feature on the Aura app where users can take pictures of what they're eating and it will give them an estimate of the nutritional value, like carb count. How cool is that? What are your thoughts on this integration coming to the Stello before G7? Let me know in the comments. I have heard that it could be a good thing that Dexcom and Aura can get all of this information on normal glucose levels and then bring that kind of control into our environment for people with type two and one that use insulin. Next, let's get into Freestyle Libre. In that ecosystem, there is now a new app which brings even better alarm features. The first is a much wanted feature, which is silent mode. Users can now set for up to six hours for all of their alerts to go to a vibrate. Unfortunately, there's no way to just have full on silent. It has to be that vibrate. Dexcom has both, and I would love to see that come to Libre, but I will take this feature in a heartbeat. There are also now gradual alarms where the alarms will start softer, and then if you don't 
acknowledge that alert slowly every five minutes there will be another alert that's a little louder and then five minutes later if you didn't acknowledge a little louder this could be helpful in a couple ways one if you're sleeping and you don't initially wake up from that softer alarm or if you're in a meeting and you want these alarms to just start off a little softer and then get louder just in case you missed it and lastly there is now the ability to change the alarm tone also a much desired feature now, here's where we're at with Freestyle Libre. There is the three, the three plus, the two, and the two plus. The plus versions are cleared to work with insulin pumps and automate insulin delivery. I'm actually getting the Libre three plus sent to me. I'll be reviewing it. I reviewed the three. You can watch that. I'll throw it in the show notes. But the three plus has this new app and it now works up to 15 days as well as the Libre two plus. Both the two and the three plus can now be used by people two years and older. It was initially four. And it's an exciting time for Libre. It's working with more pumps than ever. The Libre 3 Plus works with Beta Bionics, Twist, Tandem has announced that it's bringing integration, but no word on that. And the Libre 2 Plus works with Tandem T-Slim and the Omnipod 5. Unfortunately though, there is no follow app for either of them. The sensor connects directly to that and there is no ability for it to connect to the app either. It will be up to these companies to create a follow app, which I hope they do considering Twist and Beta Bionics both did that for their integration with Libre sensors. Before we get into even more CGMs, let's hear a word from our sponsor, SugarPixel. Today's video sponsor is from one of my favorite devices and that is SugarPixel. I've also got one back there. This LED display uses Wi-Fi to connect to continuous glucose monitors to display blood sugar levels. It gets readings from Dexcom G6, G7, and OnePlus, Libre 2, 2 Plus, 3, and 3 Plus, so long as they're connected to the Libre app, and Night Scout and Gluru and can display and alert for up to two CGM users. You can set a ton of different screens, from a big glucose reading, the rate of change, emojis with messages, an entire screen color, or more. Along the bottom, it even shows you how many minutes are left until your next reading. SugarPixel also has optional audio alerts, which can be configured on the Bluetooth app. There's a snooze button right on top. Every device comes with a vibrating puck that can be placed under your sheets, which is great for those who are hard of hearing. On the app, you can set target ranges, alerts, display screens, screen brightness, and night mode and quiet hours for when alerts won't go off. To learn more about SugarPixel and grab one for yourself, check out that link in the description. Back to the episode. And most excitingly, Abbott is working on a monitor that measures both glucose and ketones. Ketones are important to people with diabetes because of diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA. In fact, a lot of people find out they have diabetes because they go into DKA. That is when there's a buildup of ketones in the blood. Now, sometimes people can have higher ketone levels or go into DKA even when they have normal glucose levels. And oftentimes this happens alongside certain medications. So a sensor that can look at both of these will make those medications safer for people with diabetes and people won't have to go test ketones, which I've never tested ketones before. <laughs> but maybe there is something more important there. Abbott's been open about working on this ketone monitor since 2022. I reported at CNET that Abbott announced an entire line of sensors that could track things like ketones, glucose, and even alcohol and lactate. Now, no word on those last two, but in June 2022, Abbott was already conducting clinical studies on the glucose ketone monitoring system with pivotal trials set to take place in 2023. I also interviewed Abbott about this ketone monitor, which I'll throw in the show notes. And recently, Twist and Abbott announced together that that ketone sensor will work on the Twist pump. I do feel like they're getting a little ahead of themselves because as of the recording of this, Twist still isn't out and the ketone sensor still hasn't really been fully announced. So it's kind of just like super future stuff or maybe it's coming out soon and they're just really excited to talk about it. And Tandem has also entered an agreement with Abbott to integrate its glucose ketone sensor with their pumps. Medtronic has a ton coming with their next generation CGMs and pumps. I got into all their next generation pumps in my next generation pumps video, which you have to check out. I'll throw that in the show notes. Medtronic is finally bringing disposable CGMs to their line. And the first one is Simplera. There are two versions here. There's one that's just Simplera. That works with their Smart Insulin Pen InPen. Then there is Simplera Sync. 
This is the device, the CGM, that will currently sync with Medtronic 780G. Many people are already using this around the world and it has FDA clearance now in the US. The sensor has a seven day lifespan, two hour warm up, a MARD of 10.2%, and it's worn on the upper arm, just like the other CGMs. The device is super sleek, easy to use. I got into my experience wearing it on YouTube in a video. I'll throw that in the show notes too. And I got into it in an article even deeper for my all access members on diabettech.info. But you may say, Justin, those attributes, those features sound a little outdated and they kind of are. They kind of are behind other CGMs in lifespan, in the warm up and even in MARD, which may not have the biggest difference with automated insulin anyway. And there's also production issues when it comes to Simplera. Medtronic had to backtrack some steps that they were gonna make with rollout for the CGM. And I talk about that on diabetic.info. It's actually a huge win for the community. So you have to read that article. It's called like Medtronic backtracks there, whatever. I'll, I'll throw it in the show notes. But all of these reasons, the fact that it's behind and maybe even the production issues all of that combined could be why they're also teaming up with Abbott on another CGM, which would be similar to a Libre. The two announced last year that they were working together to create a new continuous glucose monitor for the Medtronic system. Abbott would be in charge of the production and Medtronic would distribute them through their system and they would be the ones who do the troubleshooting. Now this could be a big win for Medtronic users because instead of Simplera's seven day lifespan, they could get 15 day lifespan like the Libre sensors today. And instead of a two hour warm up, they can get a 60 minute warm up. So this could be really big for Medtronic. Medtronic has entered a 510K application to the FDA to get their Minimed 780G certified as an ACE pump, which would mean it can work with multiple CGMs and they sent in a separate 510K clearance so that their algorithm is an interoperable automated glycemic controller or IAGC. I get into that whole partnership and why they may have done that in a full on video about this partnership, which I'll link down in the show notes. And there's big news in the world of implantable CGMs. The Eversense 365 will now automate insulin delivery for an insulin pump, the twist pump. This integration hasn't released yet, at least with this video, but I'm excited to see where it goes. This is the first pump ever since we'll automate and it's very exciting. Now, let me tell you more about this implantable device. This implantable is placed under the skin in a 20 minute procedure. It gets one calibration a week. It gets vibrate alerts, which is a pretty cool feature that other systems don't have. And it's charged using USB-C. It used to have a cradle, but I like that now it can just easily be charged. Now, of course, an implantable, you'd expect to be fully implanted, you don't see it. Well, with the Eversense 365, you do still need an external device. But after speaking with the executives on my podcast, through that interview, they told me that they're working toward a sensor that doesn't need that external transmitter. That would truly make Eversense like way ahead of the other systems because you don't have to worry about things being on you, right? Or not getting readings when they're off of you. And I'm really hopeful for that. That is a good interview. I've listened to it multiple times myself. There is so much more happening in the world of CGMs that I couldn't even fully get into today, which is Glucotrack that is creating a continuous blood glucose monitor that gets implanted and tests the blood. There are non-invasive technologies like No Labs, which have a device that lays on your skin and uses lasers to read your glucose that never pierces the skin and so much more. If you want a video on what the future of continuous glucose monitors looks like, what I think the trajectory or trend of continuous glucose monitors is, let me know with a like on this video. As always, make sure you subscribe to this channel, give it a like, and you gotta watch my videos on all of the pumps, the next generation pumps, and the tubeless pumps, which I'll link in the show notes. Thanks for watching, I'm Justin. And I'll talk to you later.